Hi, welcome back to Smoking Cheltenham. How are you doing? Hope you're good. Yeah, today then, uh, Aintree isn't it this week? Um, what we on today, Tuesday. So yeah, just a couple of days away. Back in the conservatory again. Do you know, every time I think I've done a video in here, it's been raining. So apologies again for the sound. It's just relentless, isn't it? Since October, all my bands heavy, 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 like, you know. I think after Punches Town, I'm going to uh, build an arc or something over this summer, I think. Um, what we'll do today, uh, we'll just have a, a quick chat about a few of the Fairy House results. Um... Yeah, I've been putting sort of anti post bets up, haven't we, for next year for a little while now since before this Cheltenham. So I'll just get all them, in. I'll, I'll probably just do them all at the end, just so we've got them all in one place. Uh, we won't talk much about it, we'll do that more probably after Punches Town, but just so we've got them all there in one place. And yeah, we'll have a look at Aintree then. Right. So we'll kick off with Fairy House, just run through a few things that might be relevant for the sort of future for Cheltenham and stuff. Right, um, yeah, two and a half mile grade one, honeysuckle, mares, novice hurdle. Right, Jade de Greaves here, yeah. she did it, didn't she? This, I thought this. Horrible weather, isn't it? Is this were big? I thought from Jade de Gruzy, you know, coming two weeks after Cheltenham, five-year-old mare, she can't have been bang on for this. Like you know, she she's got to have been, she can't have been at her best here. So it's to her credit, she got it done here. It didn't kind of look lightly, did it? You, you sort of wondered after the second last but Paul threw it at the last and she pinged it didn't she landed running and yeah at the line she won by a couple of lengths like you know she won tidy I think next year she'll be you know another summer out of grass six year old I think she'll be much better next year so I think there's a lot more to come from her and providing she stays over hurdles she could go chasing but providing she stays over hurdles uh, we've got a nice ticket there I'd say for the mayor's hurdle next year so yeah that was good yeah I think I think she could improve a lot next season Uh, the grade two, two mile novice hurdle, Mirrors or West took that, he took it well, didn't he? Oh, Mirrors or West. Um, he looks all over a chaser, he looks like he's going to make a cracking chaser. He's a bit unhinged, didn't he, like his brother, but he should make a great chaser. This were right handed again, you just wonder, you know, until you see him next year. Go and do it left-handed. You won't know for sure. So personally, I couldn't go rushing him, backing him for Arkles just yet. Just want to see him do it left-handed over fences first. But yeah, um, this were good from Mirazor West. The two and a half mile Grade One Willow Warm Gold Cup. This was a highlight, I think, for many over the weekend. Um, see Jimmy Mangan take the grade one here this was nice um Spillane's tower yeah oh, I do like this horse um he looked a fair bet here really over the trip to outstay his main rival um Blood Destiny yeah I think he, he looks a two mile he does doesn't he um, I expect he'll be campaigned over two mile now just 
we tell them in mind he'd still got that question to answer for me blood destiny from when he went there last year and he just sort of blew out but you know he was a young ghost then and it might be different next time but i expect he'll be campaigned over two mile hour but spillane's tower lovely host this i love how he's been campaigned he's got plenty of experience into him over two two and a half mile he's all over three mile of this should really stand him in good stead for next year when he goes over the staying trips um he's 40 to 1 for the gold cup and i've just been wondering and wondering and i I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? 40 to 1's a fine price, isn't it? I know the Gold Cup looks brilliant. Gold Cup next year, it does. It Right now, it looks probably the best Gold Cup we've had for a long time. Right now. But what can happen in a year, can't it? Um, 40 to 1, though. Yeah, go on. We'll have a point on him at 40s for the Gold Cup next year. Mm -hmm. Why not? Yeah, it's a nice price, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, seriously, I mean, you know, who knows what improvement he's got in him when he goes three mile next year. Lovely horse he is. Um, possibly they might campaign him for the Irish National, but I don't know. I don't know. Uh, 40 to 1, I think it's worth a small little gamble for just a point. We'll just have a point on him at 40s. Two mile grade, two juvenile bottlers. Secret was impressive here. Uh, Charlton next year, I don't know, but I think he's got to be on. He's, he's got to be a player at Punchestown if he goes on to Punchestown. Jump great. Yeah, travelled, jumped, stayed on nicely from the last. Yeah, he's got to be a player there at Punchestown, I'd imagine. The two and a half mile grade two, Journey With Me, took this in a first time tongue tie. I was impressed, yeah. We, um, for me, he showed something he's not really shown before in that. He showed a bit of toughness. I think in the past, when things have got tough, he's kind of bailed out. Maybe it were his breathing, because he were in the first time tongue tie here, and he saw this out really well. He jumped nicely as well. He's, you know, he's been inclined to make the odd mistake, but he jumped nicely. Here. And yeah, he could fulfil the potential I think they've always held him in some regard you know and he could go on now from this he could make up into a Ryanair type horse for next year I'd say he's one to maybe keep on side now the Irish National intense raffles yeah he took this well really likeable horse you know handicaps are out now I'd imagine he's uh, he'll be trained for the Gold Cup I'd imagine now and you know as a six year old you know he's done nothing wrong he's going to be interesting there um all his forms soft heavy at fairy house isn't it so he's got a bit to prove in that respect you know sort of going left-handed on better ground sort of thing um but yeah he'd be a kind of fringe player at this point i'd say for the gold cup um yeah, personally, I think if I had the choice between Spillane's Tower and Intense Raffles, I'd, I'd prefer Spillane's Tower just right now. Three Mile Handicap Chase is just worth a mention because I'm quite sweet on better times ahead here. I mean, he got well put in his place by Mick Dermott, who was stepping up to Three Mile for the first time. And he just might be back for the Irish National on the same card next year uh, he was impressive stepping up in trip and yeah he looked like he could go around again at the end like you know he were just got to sharpen up his jumping a little but yeah he looked good here 
and then we'll last thing we'll do we'll just mention the bumper and close the meeting redemption day first time hood again this new mustache accessory wildly impressive here settled well off the pace it come through in the blinker and eye anywhere where it gone weren't he if he should be in bumpers still i don't know but yeah this was impressive and you just wonder i just start to wonder about this charlton bumper form because there's a, there were a couple of horses here that tied in with a sort of fourth and fifth in that bumper and there's been another horse or two run as well and they haven't done much for the form there so you do just wonder about this bumper like i mentioned uh, at the time i think this sort of take out horse for me the standout horse to take from that was the runner up there um, Horse, you know what I mean right and that that were fairy house anyway so we'll do the uh, anti post roundup just at the end Aintree right a few disclaimers here I always tread carefully at Aintree anyway I'm always a bit more selective at Aintree sort of like my biggest bet at Aintree would be sort of less than half the stake and my biggest bet at Cheltenham. A few reasons for that. Um, not least, a good while back now, a uh, fair few years ago now, did great at Cheltenham. You come out, you got plenty, haven't you? Cl plenty of money. Went into a tree, yeah, easy game this. No, absolutely got wrecked at a tree. So ever since then, I've just been a, a bit more cautious now at Aintree. And, you know, it's a bit like Russian roulette. I always think with the Cheltenham runners, you know, you back them and they can just fall out of the back of the telly for no good reason other than they've run at Cheltenham, like, you know. And you don't know, sometimes you'll, you'll see an horse, you think that's had a hard race at Cheltenham. I've got to be against this and it allows up like and there's other horses you think well they should be okay and yeah they just fall out the back of the telly so there's always a bit of gamble there we ain't tree it has been we've got the four week gap this year and also with the Cheltenham meeting being run mainly on every ground they didn't go the same sort of pace as they often did so although it were every ground I don't, don't think the horses are quite such a tough race generally, generally for a lot of the races. We'll see, but yeah, it might not be so bad generally for the Cheltenham horses this year, but there's always that chance, isn't there, when you're playing here, so I'm always a little bit careful, particularly with the sort of shorter price horses. On top of that this year, we've got the ground. At the moment, this morning, they're giving it a soft, heavy in places. Obviously, the weather is what the weather is today. That's probably going to be heavy, I'd imagine, by the end of today. And then we've only got tomorrow, haven't we, before it starts on Thursday. So it looks like it's going to come up heavy which is another reason to be cautious although to be fair most of the form this season's on this sort of ground isn't it but you know you have a few well i did anyway you have a few horses in mind for Aintree. when you're thinking about Aintree, you're thinking oh a nice bit of spring ground aren't you but yeah it doesn't look like being that anyway certainly not that and then on top of all that we've got Nicky Henderson, aren't we? Now, he's got some of his big guns entered here. That's Miss Cheltenham. We just don't know, though, do we? We don't know what to expect. Is it going to be the same again? Is I think is Sergino his first sort of big gun to run? 
I couldn't be back in that OC for money. I just couldn't, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm only going to skip through some of these races. I'm uh, going to miss plenty out. But yeah, I, I couldn't be back. You know, you need to see how his horses are running, aren't you? So you've got that headache as well. You don't know if you can trust the Henderson horses to run well. You know, personally, I'd, I'd stay clear of the first day and see how they go, and then you can make your mind up, can't you, going forward. So that's like a triple whammy there, aren't we? We've got the Cheltenham effect, we've got the heavy ground, most likely heavy ground, I guess, and, yeah, we've got this question mark over the Henderson runners. So, yeah, there's plenty of reasons there to tread carefully, I'd suggest. Saying all that, I will spin through some of these races and give you my thoughts on them. I ain't got really so much in solid bets. Generally, I've just sort of, you know, there's a few horses at nice prices, sort of double figure prices, I think worth mentioning. Um, you know, I, I don't want to go race to race and give you my opinions when my opinion might change, you know, you know. On here, if, if I've told you an horse before, I've always had my money on it, like, you know. So I don't want to be just going through these races, telling you and think, oh, he's going to back that, and then I might not back it at all, like, you know. I don't want to put you away. So just on the first day, yeah, the only bet I had, I've had a back Jerry Colomb anti-post for this, uh, two to one. He's, I think, sort of six to four-ish now. You might get twos on the day, I don't know. Um, he's the only sort of short price horse I've backed for this meeting. Of course, he's got the um, question mark there. He's had a tough race in the Gold Cup, hasn't he? But he's had a fairly light season. He bounced out of Cheltenham last year with a smaller gap and put up his best performance of the season at Aintree. He, he seemed to glide around Aintree last season. Uh, looking at this race, so anti-post, he only really looked to me to have Shishkin to beat. And you have got that question mark with Nicky's horses, haven't you? I mean, if Sergino blows out the first day, Shishkin might not even run. So I just thought it was worth taking a little chance at the twos. Um, you know, I didn't get mad on it or anything, you know. Um, did not expect him to be facing Corbett's Cross here, though. Um, yeah, that's a bit of a surprise. I, I just don't know. Uh, I mean, he's got like a stone to find, hasn't he? Stepping out of novice company. Yeah, that's... You know, I weren't expecting him to be in here, to be honest. But he'd looked to have, as much as we rate Corbett's cross, he'd looked to have it all on here, I'd suggest, against Gold Cup second. I think if Jerry runs his race, he should be taking this. Uh, Shishkin, though, you yeah, got to respect him. He's unbeaten at Aintree. You just have that question mark with Nicky's horses and Shishkin is not a horse for me you could ever kind of trust, you know. You just never quite know with him. Um, and Corbett's cross, novice into this, looks a stiff ask, really. As 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 good as he were at Charlton, this is, this is a bit of an ask. Um, I just wonder, JP, he's got his own little Gold Cup army, aren't he, for next season? He's got this fella, he's got Fat to File, he's got I Know The Way You're Thinking and Spillane's Tower. I just wonder here, have they thrown him in here just to see have we got a Gold Cup horse or have we got a National horse? And maybe how he runs here will determine if he's going to be trained for a Gold Cup or a Grand National next season. But yeah, selection's Jerry Colomb anyway, and I backed him, I put my money on him, you know. Um, he's the only sort of short-ish price horse I've backed. The rest of it, um, I mean, you know, Grey Dawning, you 
you know, I think he should take the beating, but what's he, 11 to 8 or something, you know, they say it's, it's not for me, I'm eating to be getting stuck into short prices, I've just had that one there, Jerry, come on. Um, yeah, coming into this meeting, I, I like dancing on my own, you know, did me a good favour last year in the Red Room, Handicap Chase, but really he wants better ground, I think, you know, I mean, he's his weapon he he just travels and he jumps and he gets a lot of horses out of the comfort zone but that's you'd imagine going to be negated by the ground he, he does want better ground really and they've took him out on the past on bad ground so i'd uh, i'd leave him alone on this ground i think friday then <coughs> Open the card with the 145, three mile one, grade one, mild main novice chase. Right, yeah. I know the way you're thinking. It's the chosen one of JPs here. It's an interesting race. This is quite intriguing. We've got, I know the way you're thinking. Chianti Classico's in here. Hiroko, Giovinco, Broadway Boy, Hartwood. Yeah. Now, I know the way you're thinking, Chianti Classico are coming from handicaps, aren't they? They took out the Kimio and the Ultima, respectively. You know, the Kimio 3 2, 3 mile. You'd say watching them at Charlton Chianti Classico would be more an entry type, I'd say. I know the way you think it's quite short here, isn't it? Last to look to sort of twos between sort of twos, nine to four, five to two. I think I'd have to be against him here. I would, you know, as much as I like the horse, and it did me a good favour. Stepping up to grade one company at that sort of price, given his running style, you know, he came from well off the pace there, didn't he? His jumping can be a bit sticky. Even in this ground around Aintree, I think at the prices, I'd have to be against him. I'd respect Chanty Classico. Iroko's had a funny old season, and he he should really come on plenty from Cheltenham, stepping up to three mile. You can sort of see it, but he's pretty short as well, three seven to two. I don't know. He might be one to just put a line through for the season, maybe. Yeah, JP's again, he's gone with two here, aren't he? There is two. I, I would have backed Corbett's Cross in this if it had been here, but Giovinco's here. He's uh, well, the, these are just the entries, we don't know what's definitely running yet, do we? Uh, Giovinco and Broadway boys entered up here. Giovinco ran a nice race third in the Browns, didn't he? And he's got track form, he'd have to be a player if he comes here. And against that sort of handicap form of the Chansey Classic in another way, he'd be interesting. Broadway boy, he skipped Cheltenham, so he's coming here nice and fresh. Um, yeah, I weren't too sure if he'd just done enough for the season. You know, he had quite a lot of tough races early on, but if they've got him back, he'd be interesting. The one I think, though, at a price that's quite interesting and I just had a small bit on him just a small bit is Hartwood at 10 to 1 also coming from a handicap he's he's rated in the sort of ballpark with all these other players here and he's 10 to 1 uh, he's only had four chase starts he did only take an handicap of 10 stone 1 off 136 last time so this is a big step up but you could say the same for I know the way you're thinking Enchanted Classico albeit they won off higher marks that with 2 mile 5 Hartwood last time you know his, his form reads well 
Uh, he's second to Grange Clare West. Did he have Corbett's crossing behind that day? Looks good form. Yeah. And it was just the way, really, he came... The way he came clear after the last over, that 2-5. He's looked for a while to me like he could improve plenty for stepping up to three mile. This is his only entry here. And at 10 to 1, I just think he's a bit of value in this. I think he should run here. So it's his only entry. He's nice and fresh for this, not run since that uh, DRF. So. Looks very much like he's been targeted at this race. At double figures there, I think he's a bit of value, Hartwood. Uh, the 220 race, two and a half mile William Will handicap hurdle. There's a load entered here. I haven't gone through the race in depth, but the one that just smacked me in the face, and hopefully this time he runs, not like Jit Lange, but he's one to keep in mind when we do see him, is making headway. Um, yeah, shrewd stable this. We mentioned before you know when this fella he's been crying out for a step up to two and a half miles they've kept him at two mile all season he's got some solid form there looks like getting his chance here at two and a half mile he went in the pipe he didn't get in that he was rated too low but i've already had a little each way on this fella he's 12 to 1 top price now at coles and labrooks I think he's number 41 in the list, so he does need some to come out still. I think he's 128 rated this horse. But yeah, his form reads well. He's been crying out for two and a half mile. Uh, his stable's in good form. Yeah, I, I'm interested. I like him making headway here. Uh, Castle de Motz, we mentioned him last time, didn't we? You know ran way way too keen at Cheltenham and if he turns up here in a first time hood then he's got to be interesting he did have a tough race though at Cheltenham uh, making headway like Hartwood he's, he's coming in here nice and fresh yeah 2.55 2 mile grade 1 top novice hurdle now usually yeah uh, it's best to go with the sort of best place supreme horse. I think I haven't gone through it, but I'm sure off the top of my head, if you back the best place supreme horse in this, you'd be probably in front, I think, over the years. We've got Slade Steel, Mystical Power, Firefox all entered up here. Slade Steel has an entry in the two and a half, as well as does Firefox. Right, if if this ground is run, if if this is run on heavy ground though, the one I had a little each way on, just a small small each way bet, was Il Atlantique. Um I think Willie might flip Il Atlantique and Asian Master at this meet, and I can see Il Atlantique drop to two mile and Asian Master being stepped up to the two and a half mile race. Now, of course, he's got Mystical Power in here. Uh, Mark Welsh will ride that. So, there's just a chance, I think, if the Atlantic goes here, he could have uh, Paul on his back too. And I just think he's interesting if it comes up heavy. If it comes up heavy, I think he'll go from the front and I think he'll run a huge race. He might take a bit of pegging back. If Slade steals in the race, I think he may well cut him down after the last on this heavy ground, if it's heavy ground. The better the ground, the less chance the level Antigua would have at a thought, and the better chance Mystical Power would have. You know, if we were coming here on typical sort of spring good to soft ground, I'd be strong on Mystical Power here, and probably Dysar Enos may be the danger getting seven pound so we're guessing a bit with the ground aren't we we don't really know like i say if, if it comes up heavy 
he'll have Blantique each way I think and Slade Steel should he be in this race he might be the one for the win if it's more soft than heavy then I think that brings Mystical Power and Firefox into this more and the better the ground the better Mystical Power's chances you know the way he ran at Cheltenham on normal Aintree ground you'd be strong on Mystical Power here but the heavy ground if it comes up heavy he's going to negate his chances so the you know if it sort of comes up soft here if it's more soft than heavy then Mystical Power could possibly turn the form round I think with Slade Steel so it all kind of revolves around quite how bad the ground is in my mind anyway this race but I did just have a small bit on the level Antique he's kind of like 14s each way you know the sort of thinking if it comes up heavy which is looking kind of like they were going to start on heavy anyway and then I think the predicting kind of showers through the week so I don't know if it's going to get much better than heavy to be honest we'll see um, it's hard enough trying to pick the winners without being a weather forecaster to it right um, yeah yeah heavy ground drops the lad link to you can't, I think go from the front on the heavy you could take a little bit of pegging back um, Slade Steel could be that horse to cut him down after the last I think better the ground if it comes up near the soft then I'd be inclined to say it's more between like Slade Steel, Mystical Power and Firefox and if it's not heavy I think Mystical Power okay. yeah if it's not heavy mystical power, if it is heavy, it'll have Lantique each way and Slade Steel to win. Is that clear? The <laughs> uh, 405 over the top of the 2 mile 5 over the National Fences. I've had a little bet on this anti post, and the horse I bat is Life in the Park. Um, yeah, I've got some previous with this horse, I'm batting for a good while now. Um, what last time out they took the tongue town for the first time didn't they and he ran a big race there you were quite eye catching in that plate staying on strongly towards the finish um bit like journey with me yeah journey with me you had that first time tongue tie that seemed to make a big difference to him and i think maybe it did with this horse too um, I know when they've had a wind up don't they if, they if they've been struggling with the breathing quite often they say the second time is the time to catch them because it takes them that first one sometimes to kind of realise they can breathe and maybe the way he ran would suggest that it's like you know he seemed to get a bit out of pace he probably thought oh, I don't want to go through all this again and then like it's like oh I can breathe and he kind of rattled home didn't he so the way he jumps I think he'll be well suited to the national fences and yeah I just you know it's, it's a tough old race but double figures again I think he's around about 12 to 1 now had a little bit of life in the park there and the 440 race 3 mile grade 1 Sefton novice hurdle this is a fascinating race this um, Croke Park is entered here for Gordon I think he'd love the three mile bad ground not a worry I'd be quite keen on Croke Park but Gordon has got plenty entered for Giggins Town I mean he's 25 to 1 but I dare back him because he, he may not run He's he's got I think Gordon's got maybe four or five sort of gigging town horses entered here. But if Croke Park turns up in this, I'll be having something on him. Shanna Bob's here as well. We've got both of these, haven't we? We've had a little on both of these for the Browns next year at mad prices. 66s and 50s. Yeah, Shanna Bob's entered here. We like this horse too. I'd say we'll just see how Nicky's horses run on the Thursday. We'll see how Sergino runs and uh, 
he's got another big runner there and we'll see how they go <coughs> the one I've had a small bit on each way is Maya Town um, there's still 33s in one place I think 365 has still got a bit of the 33s it's sort of gone elsewhere but it's still there 33s I did check all these prices just before I did this again yeah my town it's Lucinda Russell's horse it's jocked up so it's definitely an intended runner uh, and just been for Lucinda Russell's horse she's got a brilliant record in this race at 33 to 1 I think it's just you just gotta have a little bit each way on this like you know uh, lightly raced won well last time stepping up to three mile here he's got a prominent running style which would all go well for this race and yeah at 33s i think it's just like a must each way bet you know it won't go mad but it's definitely worth a little small bet each way and then i'll see nearer the time maybe back in croke park and shadow bob as well like Uh, then Saturday then, yeah, we open up here, the 155, grade one, two and a half mile Mersey Nobby Sirdle. So, you know, we don't know where all these horses are going. Slade Steel's also entered here. Maybe if the ground comes up heavy, they might keep him to the two mile. He's the supreme winner. If he does come here, he'll take the world a beating, I think. Uh, I won't look beyond him, to be honest. Um, it probably does I think look at a weaker race this so they, they may come here um, and for that reason it's quite difficult to play on it post uh, Coldwell Potter I think this is where he goes to but he's changed stables so I'd just like to see how he runs for Paul there you know I'm just kind of let him run if Slade Steel doesn't run here the two I think could be interesting is brighter days ahead if she runs here I think two and a half mile heavy ground left handed I think she's a bit better left handed getting seven pound if you take Slade Steel out of this getting seven pound from the field I think she'd be really interesting I would be quite keen on her and the other horse I think will be interesting is Asian Master. As I mentioned before, I think they might kind of flip Il Atlantique and Asian Master. I think they might drop Il Atlantique to two and push Asian Master out to two and a half. And he looked, he ran a nice race last time in the Supreme. And if he comes here and Slade Steel's not in the race, I think he'd look really interesting. Uh, and at the moment there's a bit of eights and a bit of tens around for these two horses but you don't know if Slade steals here or not but they do look yeah they look decent so if Slade steel weren't here they'd look good prices I'd say uh, yeah Asian Master on a big race in the Supreme stayed on nicely there after going really wide on, on the turn for home and looks like he'd relish this step up to two and a half mile it might be just worth a small bet yeah, and they post it sort of round about 10 to 1 uh, 233 mile 1 William Hill handicap chase I haven't gone through this race in any sort of depth at all but Cribilli just jumped out at me here if you remember we said at Cheltenham mentioned he looked like he's improve plenty for stepping up to three miles so if he gets a chance over three mile here I'd be really interested in him I think he's generally around eight to one um, yeah he'd be interested the 305 the three mile grade one Liverpool hurdle yeah this is an interesting race teapot said to dear Irish points entered here 
Eden Valley Lake centred here, or for Robcourt. I don't know what they're going to run. The market would suggest they're going to go here with Teapot. And now, he'd be one of us, you know, coming out of Cheltenham. You wouldn't fancy to back up. I wouldn't anyway, given that the key to him seems to be he needs to be fresh so he's a horse if he runs here i think i'd be happy to take teapot on uh, just on that freshness angle um the race doesn't want to have the greatest strength in depth in it i'd imagine if teapot runs here they probably won't run irish point um Eden Valley Lake, they may well let him go too. And he's been kept fresh for this, hasn't he? I think this has been his target. He's interesting. I'm not sure he'd want the ground bottomless. But, you know, I think he's interesting at double-figure prices. And the other horse that's interesting for this, and if you remember, I mentioned him a good while back now for this specific race, is Strong Leader. Uh, for Ollie Murphy, he's been jocked up as well. He skipped Cheltenham. He's waited for this. Uh, he's he's got a good record at Aintree. He ran much his best race of the season last year when he came runner up to in the pocket. He finished strongly over the two mile that day. Um. Yeah. Uh, he ran in, was it the Cleve last time at Cheltenham, three mile, he stayed on really strongly there. I don't think Cheltenham's his track. He doesn't seem to come down the hill there. But certainly Aintree is, and he's been kept fresh for this. The one thing is this ground, you know, I'd imagine when they put him away for this, they were thinking they'd get a nice bit of spring ground. But, yeah, so I'm not quite sure on the heavy ground. But, you know, he's double figures too. Um, he's a bit interesting, I'd say. Um, yeah, two uh, double figures. And then just the National. Yeah, the National. Uh, see, last time I saw you put up two for this, I am Maximus and adamantly chosen. Now, with the ground going the way it's going, I am Maximus... Uh, would love their sort of soft heavy he's come in adamantly chosen wants a nice bit of better ground I'd say he's kind of gone out um, I think I'm Maximus they were 10s he's into 8s now adamantly chosen were 33s he's out to 50s now he may not even run which I wouldn't mind because one non runner no bet but I don't want to uh, at 33s I think I'll just let him run just in case like you know but you wouldn't fancy him so much, really, on the ground. Right, yeah, I've gone through this race a few times now. And I always come back to Aya Maximus. I think he's probably the best handicapped horse in this. He's an Irish national winner. He's a grade one winner at two and a half mile. I mean, the Irish national that day... Just a handful of runners got round. I think there were less than 10 got round. You can see it being the same sort of test in the national. They may not be double figures finishing. And I, Maximus, just powered him, didn't he? I think he'll love it. Everything really points to him, you know. Bar is jumping. He has this jumping style, doesn't he? Kind of moves like a ballerina. With different different length legs like one leg shorter than the other <laughs> having some sort of fit I don't know um, you see him at a fence sometimes he kind of gets there stops climbs over and then goes again that's your worry isn't it it is if if he were normal sort of standard jumper I would be really keen on him but you just don't know with the fences there quite how he's going to take to it if he jumps if he don't lose any more sort of ground than he normally loses over the fences I'd be yeah I'd be really keen on him um, so he is like my main bet in the race but 
it's not a race I'm getting too involved in this year. Um, and yeah, if if he if he, if he don't lose any more ground than he normally loses over the fences, I think on on paper he looks the one for me. You've got to respect the favourite as well, Corot Rambler. You know, um, but the two I just had a small little each way bets on as well recently. I've been a uh, played these last week just a little bit each way on Mr Incredible who's he's been well backed he's into sort of 12s now but I think he looks you know looking at it's going to come up to kind of heavy ground you know he's fine on the heavy ground he's got a good record on heavy ground he's had one run this year it looks like he's been laid out for it. That were a really nice run in that Utoxita National, Midlands National. He, he ran a big race there. First run of the season, come second. He stays the distance. He loves the ground. He ran here last year and he took really well to it. He jumped fantastic. There, there were one fence. It looked a big fence, like they look big, don't they? Um, are the beaches or the chair or something. It looked a big old fence anyway, and he really asked him the jockey could win into this fence, and he absolutely winged it, took legs out of this horse side of it. Yeah, he took really well to it last year. His saddle slipped, and the jockey kind of fell off after the canal turn. But, you know, on every ground, he's off less than 11 stone. I think he's off about 10 stone, 9, you know. Yeah, he looks a solid each way, but I'd, I'd expect he'll be in like the first six. So, and the other horse are back to a little bit each way, just a small bit each way on Gallia Delito for Skelton, off also off a low weight, you know, one of the bottom weights there, thirty-three to one. Her form ties in pretty closely with Mr. Incredible on a line through my silver lining. They both gave that horse twenty pounds. Uh, Gallia Lito finished half a length behind it. Basically, Gallia de Lito is four pound better off for just over a length on a line through my silver lining. So she kind of ties in with that horse. She kind of ties in also with Iron Maximus. Who she finished, I think, a place behind him in the Browns. I think she's kind of six or seven pound better off, sort of five or six lengths. Although Anne Maximus has taken giant strides since then, giant kind of wonky strides. But yeah, he's, he's you know, he's, he's improved a lot since then. The form's a little bit patchy this year. But Dan Skelton in these big handicaps, yeah. They tend to throw in the odd bad run. But, uh, I wouldn't let that put you off. She's had one run in a handicap and she ran a blinder there. She stayed on really well in that Warwick Classic chase. She looked a little bit outpaced for much of the race, but she stayed on really strong. Um, yeah, if it comes up heavy like it look, looks like being, I think each way, 33s, yeah. Her and Mr. Incredible, you'd say, would maybe just lack a little bit of class to win, like a Grand National, a modern day Grand National. But if it comes up heavy ground, maybe a horse like this will fall in. <coughs> <coughs> oh, apologies. Still got a bit of this cold, you know. And yeah, that's it then. So yeah, I'm not going mental on the National this year. But in summary, I Maximus would be the main selection. So if he can negotiate these fences, all right. I think he's got a blinding chance. Ground looks like it's gone fundamentally chosen. May not even run. I'm not sure. But I've got a little bit on him. And yeah, each way bets. I think Mr. Incredible and Gallia de la Tau. Uh, I think one of them can hit the frame and that's that then that's age three so just a few of my thoughts there lots 
so much sort of solid selections, but I think pretty much everything I've sort of mentioned there is at nice sort of double figure prices. Maybe you'll get something from that, I don't know. Um, just make your mind up from that. Uh, the anti post roundup, yeah. Right, yeah, we'll just get this done then. I'll just briefly run through what we've got so you know where we are. And then when we do our last video, I can just refer back to this and go all in one place. So, yeah, up to now we've got Supreme, one point William Money, 25s, still 25s. Arkle, two points, Ill Atlantic, 25s, still 25s. Champion Hurdle, three points, Lozimouth, 14s, now 4s. Three points, Ballyburn tens, now sevens. Mayor's Erdle, two points, Jade de Grugy at twenties, now fives. Browns, right, you're comfy. <laughs> two points, better days ahead, 25, still 25s. We've got a point on Key de Bourbon at 33s and a point at 25s. Two points, Shadow Bob at 50s, it's now 33s. Three points, reading Tommy Wrong at 20s, he's now 40s. And a point each way, Croke Park at 66s, now 50s. Gold Cup, we got three points, Fat to File at 12s, he's now 4s. A point on Corbett's Cross at 20s. And we just had uh, a point on Spillane's Tail there at 40s, haven't we? Turners, yeah, Turners, we just had one point on Brighter Day's head at 16s, now 25s. And for the Mayor's Chase, we back Brighter Day's head, three points at eights, now fives. Then I did put, after a bit of wine, one night, halfway through Charlton, I did put a multi up there, I don't normally do that, but we had a two point double on Ballyburn at eight to one for the champion, and Lozimouth at five to two for the Mayor's. Yeah, uh, we've already got five points in the bin, and we've got 31 points on there, so that's it all in one place. Some nice looking bets there, a couple iffy ones. Yeah, we'll cover that in a bit more detail in the sort of last video after Punches Town. We'll have a good chat about all these races for next year. So that's that for today, then. Uh, well, Coming up to an hour, it's longer than I thought. <coughs> I guess we covered quite a bit there, aren't we? Fairy House, the Anti Post Roundup, and the whole of Aintree, so yeah, not bad. Right, so good luck this week then. Um, yeah, all the best, and thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. Bye.